Uh, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Louis Rosenberg. I've been uh, involved in the metaverse uh, now for over 30 years, which is kind of hard to believe. Um, I, uh, I started as a researcher at, at Stanford and NASA working on virtual reality vision systems. I was immediately captivated by the, by the possibilities. Uh, at the same time, I immediately felt like uh, myself and potentially other people uh, would not want to be uh, cut off from the real world. And what I really wanted to do is take the power of virtual reality and splash it all over the real world. And uh, I pitched that to the US Air Force and was lucky enough to have them uh, fund me to build uh, what was really the first interactive augmented reality system that allowed people to reach out and interact with real and virtual objects for the first time. And, uh, and I was so uh, I impressed by how excited people got, even when the, with the crude systems back then, that in 1993, I founded uh, a virtual reality company, Immersion Corporation, uh, that uh, is actually still around today. It's going to be 30 years old uh, next next year. Uh, in 2004, I founded an augmented reality company, uh, Outland Research. And then uh, in 2014, uh, I founded an artificial, in artificial intelligence company, uh, unanimous AI. And, and I point that out because I think those those three things are really a part of the metaverse. Virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, I think they all become central to the metaverse. And um, and so with, with that said, what, what I wrote for the report uh, is that I, I predicted that, that by 2040, people will look back and laugh at images of the 2020s that show people walking down the street, staring down at little screens in their hands with their necks bent, bumping into things. And I say that because the metaverse will transform the way we interact with information. It'll take it off of screens and put it naturally into the world around us, spatially arranged in the way that our perceptual system was meant to perceive it. Uh, and to me, that's the core of the metaverse. In fact, I would define the metaverse as this societal transition that's just starting from a world where most digital content is viewed in the third person as flat media to a world where most content is engaged in the first person as immersive experiences. And, and this is really a profound change. It's the change of the, the role of the user from a viewer to a participant of content. Um, in terms of how I see it impacting society, I really see it evolving in two directions at once that, that I would refer to as the virtual metaverse and the augmented metaverse, which will have a lot of overlap, uh, but will also emerge at different rates and have different players and different business models. And so I think it's it's really helpful to think of think of these two things separately because they they really will evolve and come out of uh, slightly different places. The, the virtual metaverse will be fully virtual worlds where people are represented as avatars. Many people think of this as the main metaverse uh, that will impact our lives. Uh, I disagree. Uh, it sounds like from Avi's comments, he disagrees as well. Um, Again, my personal experience is, uh, you know, from, from decades ago is that we humans don't like to be cut off from the real world for extended periods. Uh, for a few hours, uh, it's a great escape for entertainment, education, shopping, watching virtual sports. But I don't, I don't believe people will spend their daily lives in the virtual metaverse. I mean, maybe hardcore gamers, uh, maybe, you know, uh, small, small sets of people, but not the majority of the people. Uh, on the other hand, the augmented metaverse uh, that's going to be the real world embellished with virtual content. And I believe this will be the metaverse where we spend our daily lives. Uh, it requires lightweight and stylish eyewear, which is a little bit harder than, than VR headsets, but it will happen. And, and I believe it will replace the mobile phone as the item we use to access digital content throughout our day. And, and I do think that that transition will be fully realized by 2040. Um, and, and so... I, I do think the metaverse is happening. I think it's happening faster than most people think because I think it will first appear primarily as the augmented metaverse. Um, I think whether it's virtual or augmented, uh, the one important thing that spans both of these issues is, is that we need to start considering regulation. Uh, and I'm not talking about regulation of content. I'm not talking about regulation of users. I'm talking about regulation of platforms and platform providers. And that's because this transition from flat media to immersive experiences by its very nature will give metaverse platforms unprecedented power to monitor our lives and to alter the surroundings around users. And they can do both of those things without us, the public, even realizing it. 
And so in, in order to enable immersive experiences in virtual and augmented worlds, the platforms will need to track everything about our lives. They'll need to track where we go, what we do, who we're with, what direction we're looking, how long our gaze is lingering, how fast we're walking, where we slow down, what store windows we glance in, what products we pick up off the shelves. They could potentially track everything. And if there's no regulation, they could profile everything. Uh, they'll also be able to track our facial expressions, our vocal inflections, our posture, even our vital signs, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, eye motions. And they'll be able to use this to accurately predict our emotions. This means that, that platforms will not just know everything that we're doing during our lives, they'll know exactly how we feel while we're doing it. <laughs> and and how we react to thousands of little encounters we have every day. And this, this type of behavioral and emotional data could be exploited to create detailed profiles that can predict our daily lives and our reactions to almost everything. And so this is, this is scary and it's not just a privacy issue. It's not just a privacy issue because advertising and persuasion in the metaverse, it's not gonna be flat content like ads and videos. It's gonna be immersive experiences that are engaged all around us. It will be virtual product placements that are injected into our world to subtly influence our perspective. It'll be virtual spokespeople that are AI avatars that engage us in promotional conversation. And in both cases, we might not be able to tell the difference between an authentic experience that we just happen to serendipitously encounter in the, in the virtual metaverse or the augmented metaverse or a targeted promotional experience that's placed into our surroundings to influence us. And so for those reasons, I really strongly believe that policymakers need to consider guardrails that will allow us to trust the authenticity of our experiences in the metaverse. And to me, this means you know, at, at the very minimum rules that require promotionally altered experiences to look and sound different so that we know what is promotional and what is authentic. And without that, I don't, I don't think there's a way to have trust in the metaverse. Um, and again, I'm a proponent of the metaverse. I've, I've been pushing for immersive worlds for 30 years and I, I believe that it has a, a really big potential for good. I, I, I think it can be a deeply humanizing technology that allows us to access information in the form that our perceptual system was meant to receive it as first person experiences. And this can le unleash you know, un unbelievable magical, magical applications, but we need to also protect against the downsides and do it quickly or we could end up tainting the metaverse and making it a place that, that nobody trusts because they can't even trust what's real and what's not real.